Hi, I'm Keith and I'm going to show you how to change a track on a John Deere 35G. This is a rubber track, not a steel one, and this is how you do the rubber one. Okay, the tools that you're going to need to change this track on a John Deere 35G is a simple chisel bar, just a long pry bar. You can buy at any tool outfit store, hardware store. They're very common all over the place. Uh, you'll need a 19 millimeter opened end wrench so that you can pull the grease valve out and you can reinstall it. And you'll need a grease gun. You can use a manual grease gun, a pneumatic grease gun, an electric grease gun. I choose to use an electric grease gun, uh, but they will all work and they will all work just as good. When we change this track, we got to lift this machine in the air. Now this machine has a blade, so we're going to show you how to lift this machine in the air with a blade. We're going to push the blade down first, lift the back end up in the air, or the front end of the tracks in this case. And then we push the boom and bucket down into the ground and it'll lift the machine in the air. Now we're safely to be able to work on this thing in the air and change the tracks. Now, if you don't have a blade on your machine, we're going to put this back on the ground and we're going to show you how to lift the machine in the air with no blade. Now, if you have no blade on the machine, this is a way you can lift this side in the air, and now we can work on this side with it in the air. Now, whenever you're working on a track and you have an operator in the machine, whenever you go near that track, you want to make sure your operator lifts the safety lever up, because if he accidentally bumps the lever, the machine could drop and it could hurt or actually kill you. First thing that we need to do is we need to release the tension of this track to make it loose enough uh, to be able to get it off. So inside, of our little access hole here. Now most machines have an access hole right here. Inside is a grease valve and that holds the grease in to make sure the track stays tight. In this particular machine, it's a 19 millimeter wrench. You can use a ratchet wrench or a manual wrench, which is this one. As you can see, the grease is coming out, the track is going down. I like to take the whole grease valve right out. Here's your grease valve. We put it somewhere clean, does not get greasy or dirty. Now this machine is brand new, so as you see, I take the grease valve out and right away the, the idler came in and the track became very loose. As these machines get older, lots of dirt gets piled up inside of here and sometimes you'll pull that grease valve out and the track won't move very much. So there's two different ways that we can get that track all the way in. One, if you're bigger like myself, you can stand on the track, you can bounce a little bit, it'll help bring that idler in. The other way is if you have your bar and you put it in the sprocket here, you can get your operator to fire the machine up, travel this track backwards, and it'll create a, a gap in between the sprocket and track, create more tension, it'll help bring that track in. So what I'll do is, we don't need to do it, but we're gonna run it around so you can see what it's like. That's all you need to do. The track is now backed off enough that we can pop this track off. So you need a bar, this is just a simple chisel bar you can buy at any local hardware store or tool store. You have your operator fire the machine up. And if you slide your bar just a little ways in, you begin, you're gonna be able to put pressure down, try and forcing this track off, and then you get your operator to travel this track forwards and it'll walk itself off the front idler. And you wanna give yourself a little bit of room from this bar in case it kicks, you don't want it to hit you, you stay a safe distance and be able to hold on to it still. As you can see, the track is off the front idler now. The back is fairly easy to pop off. I usually just pick it off like that. And now this track is removed. We're going to slide it out of the way. We've gotten our track off now. This is the factory John Deere track came with the machine. This is an aftermarket track. There's small differences. There's these little lines on top of the lug pattern here. There are some lines left in this, but they're gonna wear off very quickly while you travel this machine around. I do notice this track has a little bit more shape on the front edge, leading edge of the lugs. This one has a little bit, but not as aggressive as this one. All excavator tracks, the rubber tracks, they're directional. As you can see, these tracks, they kind of V towards the middle in a forward pattern. The factory tracks are V'd a little bit more aggressively. 
we have to make sure that we put them on the right way. And the reason for that is when you start getting into really soft material and your track spins, you don't want it to act like a paddle. You want it to act uh, so that the mud gets forced out of the track and gets the track more uh, traction. If you look at the V pattern, when you put the track onto the machine, on the top, you want the V pointing towards the front idler. So that when it goes underneath, it points towards the sprocket all, at all times. And that way it'll force the mud out from under the track instead of scooping it in and keeping it under the track. So now to put this track on, we're gonna lower the machine a little bit closer to the ground so we don't have to lift the track up as high. That should be good. Now what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna try and get the track up on top of the sprocket and start to get it up on top of the carrier roller it's called. That's the roller that's on top. So now you can see I've gotten it a little bit on the top of the idler. I'm up on top of the carrier roller and I'm definitely on top of the sprocket. Now we're going to get the operator to lift the machine in the air a little bit. So now we're up on the sprocket. We can kick it in a little bit more. Now we're fully on the sprocket. Now we have to get it over our idler. As you can see, I try to manhandle it on a little bit. Not quite there. We'll use our chisel bar again. Same as when we're taking it off, but we're gonna go the other way and we're gonna to wanna to force it on. You can get your operator to travel it forwards again. Now the track is fully on the sprocket, the upper roller, and completely on the idler. Now we're gonna adjust the track tension. We clean our grease valve off, making sure there's no dirt or debris on it. And we do that so when we put it in, it has a good seal. There's no foreign material. I like to clean all the grease out of here so my hand doesn't get covered in it. Make sure the grease valve is tight. Once the grease valve is tight, we can start to add grease and adjust the tension. I like to see about an inch of play between the lower roller in the middle and the top of the rail, if you want to call it, on the track where the lower roller contacts the track. Once we get it to this point, we're going to get our operator to fire the machine up, run the track forwards and backwards, always ending going backwards. And then we're going to readjust to make sure that it's proper tension. It looks like we have proper tension here. We still have an inch gap right here. That's what we like to see. After they run this machine for a few hours, because it's a brand new track, it's gonna break in a little bit. It's going to loosen off and you'll have to readjust it.